welcome to the Cinemologists. Today things are going to get nostalgic. And I should hope that the Muppets and the story of Treasure Island need no introduction, so I'm just going to get right down to it. With the Muppets, I'm never ashamed to be revisiting them. They're timeless and ageless, and something about them appeals to all kinds of people, so that if I'm watching it with kids, I don't feel embarrassed. The film has an old Hollywood look, with stylized sets and painterly matte shots. It seems the 90s were the last gasps of the artificiality of adventure, when it could really have a storybook look, and when fantasy wasn't bogged down in grit and desaturation. Shots of, of the ship out on the ocean are all composites. We actually made a 12-foot ship, which is being composited on shots of the real ocean down in the Caribbean. And yeah, we sent uh, Tom Smith, our visual effects producer on the movie, we sent him down with a little crew, and they got to shoot sunsets and sunrises off of a yacht. And we all got to sit in, in England and be jealous of them. <laughs> It plays nicely alongside a film like The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Another aspect is the humor, a lot of which incorporates modern references in a historical context. This does wear thin when other films use it, but here the Muppets are the only ones who make these jokes, so it only feels in character for them, as if they have gone back in time and fallen into the story. But I thought sailors had talking parrots as pets. Talking parrots? Yeah, what an imagination! First pirates, now talking parrots? What's next? A singing, dancing mouse with his own amusement park? Woo-hoo! That's enough now, Polly. Go on, shoot! A notable precedent to this is Animal Treasure Island. This version is a lot of fun and features some key animation work by Hayao Miyazaki. It is an earlier example of the incredible adaptability of Robert Louis Stevenson's original story, and it also proves that animals acting like people will never go out of style. The cast of Muppets fills out some of the roster of characters from the original Treasure Island story. You have Kermit the Frog as Captain Smollett, Sam the Eagle as Mr. Arrow, and Miss Piggy as Benjamina Gunn. Get it? All the other Muppets are a delightful and memorable array of fuzzy ne'er-do-wells. Not only do we have the traditional gang of Honeydew and Beaker, Fozzie Bear, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, etc., we also have some new characters like Clueless Morgan, an incompetent but lovable baddie. Red. I say, this does not look safe. And they're well aware of the need to fit some of the other regulars in, like the Swedish chef, Sweetums, or Statler and Waldorf. Well, how else do you think we were going to get him in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> oh. The pig tribesmen of the island and their leader, Spat Am, set off a bizarre lawsuit from Hormel Foods which the judge laughed out of court on the basis that Hormel should be glad to be associated for once with real pork. Back tomorrow for our lunchtime special, roast suckling uh. potatoes. No, all right. No, no offense, madam, no offense. Also, Gonzo's kind of a masochist. Terrific. Captured by crazy wild pigs and sacrificed hideously before a pagan altar. Are we lucky or what? Oh, this is so cool. I may even have a future with the NBA. <laughs> this won't work. He liked it. Muppets aside, the film has an equally memorable cast of human actors. Kevin Bishop, who plays Jim Hawkins, only stuck in my mind when I was a kid because he looked so much like a girl. Even Blind Pew said so. Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. A pretty little girl, is it? But wouldn't you know it, Kid hit puberty in the middle of production, so thank goodness they recorded his songs already. Billy Connolly is hysterical as Billy Bones. At all times, he careens around the stage, shouting for rum or dispensing inebriated but sound advice. Beware, Beware! What? The one-legged man? Aye, but also, beware running with scissors. Or any other pointy object. It's all good fun till somebody loses an He's also notable for being the first person ever to die in a Muppet film. He is standing in a room with a dead guy! Even what would seem like a throwaway role, Mrs. Bloveridge, played by the British comedian Jennifer Saunders, is odd and ridiculous in a fun way. I'll be fine, boys! Run for it! How does she do that? Some would say that a Treasure Island is only as good as its Long John Silver. If that's the case, then Muppet Treasure Island is fabulously wealthy. Tim Curry. The name says it all. Never has Silver been more mirthful and delightfully cunning. Tim Curry need only smile and you know shenanigans are afoot. Let's go find 
the traitor! Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, if you're competing with the Muppets, you better be pretty big. The great invisible character of the film is the music. And if you think Hans Zimmer writes good music now, back in 1996, he was really composing spectacularly. The main theme alone is so thrilling and exciting. Just the first few notes on the strings get you pumped for the adventure to come. A lot of the score throughout has quick but brilliant moments. Probably one of the greatest pirate scores ever written since Korngold. It's a Muppet movie, so there will be songs. And these are really some of their most fun and memorable ones. Shiver My Timbers, Cabin Fever, and Oh Yes, A Professional Pirate. To this day, these songs should echo unironically in dorm halls across America! Not to mention, Brian Henson really knows how to transition from a heartfelt musical number back to a zany Muppets movie. The aspect of the generically titled Something Better has actually improved the older I've gotten. When I was a kid, I hated it. I mean, look at him singing in his falsetto voice about things I thought only Disney princesses canted for. But now that I'm older and a post-college grad beset by student loans, I can put myself in Jim Hawkins' shoes. Steady. I hate my life. I hate your life too. If I had a life, I'd hate it. I look around here and I want to cry. Ah, me too. I feel like the world hey, hey, hey. is passing me by. It is. How wonderful an opportunity that would be to find a treasure map with the promise of adventure and a better life. Wouldn't you risk life and limb for that? I know I would. Where to, Captain Hawkins? To wherever the wind may take us. Off to Zanzibar to meet the Zanzibar Barians. Brother, here they go again. This film was made from 1995 to 96, a time when many of us were growing up. So I'd be remiss to not point out how nostalgic it is for me. More than anything, it's a time capsule of lots of things going on at the time. We taped the film off the Disney Channel a couple of years later, and that saw me till the end of the 90s and well into the 2000s. The vibrant and cheerful aesthetic of the film meshed well with the classic films I was used to watching, which should tell you how timeless Muppet Treasure Island is and will be. But it also made a nice counterpart to another titan of the 90s, the Nintendo 64. Yes, games like Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64 had pirate-themed levels. I can still recall a summer's afternoon in rural old Middletown, Delaware. While playing Treasure Trove Cove and Banjo, I suddenly got the urge to watch Muppet Treasure Island. So that evening was filled with the smell of popcorn, watching that movie, and whatever else was crammed onto the VHS tape. Such were those times. I told you this review would get nostalgic, and it's good to look back fondly on things like this now and then, but we have to remember that, like Jim Hawkins, we have to take the chance to discover new countries. There's adventure out there. New movies to see, books to read, music to hear. This is Alex Latanzi of The Cinemologist saying, keep watching. holding your hand up in the air is hard. He ought to try having a hand up his back. Back. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. <laughs>